Good morning, Bill Medrano, Verizon Corporation here. Thanks much for attending this session on a Tableau-based data dictionary that we use on top of some of our SQL servers here at Verizon Corporation. The uh, scope of this tool is really on Microsoft SQL Server. That's what we've implemented it on. As you begin to really look into the details here, you'll see that this is equally applicable to Oracle, Teradata, Postgres, uh, quite a few other different SQL, uh, different servers. Um, the way that it works is we have a server farm, several servers, and we were, were constantly challenged with everyone that's working on these servers knowing what the other people are doing. So we started to look around for a data dictionary tool and um, what we found was that number one, they cost money and number two, they weren't exactly what we wanted. So uh, one of my peers, Tom Burns and I looked at ourselves and what are we silly? Because we could actually write one um, quicker probably than, than actually buying one. So that's what we did. We collaborated and what we have is um, a script that runs on each SQL server and creates a uh, file, a table, uh, that contains every column and its attributes uh, for every table on every database. And then they all get consolidated together and we snap Tableau right on top of that. So as far as the Tableau dashboard goes, what we're going to look at today is there's a data dictionary view that lets you look at all these columns. There's a bar chart view. As a DBA, I was really kind of concerned with some of the design of the databases that people were, were making as well as some of their table designs. In particular, I was really interested in not having people treat our SQL servers like a, um, an overgrown Excel on steroids type repository. Um, so I put together a bar chart view that shows me the uh, occurrence of the same column name, uh, how many times they occur in a given database. So what that's enabled me to do is, is find people that instead of creating a normalized data structure are really just taking data feeds, dumping them out there, and uh, when they really should be in one table. There's also a database size view. Uh, it's always good to know what a database is configured for, how much it's currently being used, uh, just to avoid any rude surprises. And also performance-wise, some of the databases um, were not configured to grow optimally, so I wanted to be really on top of that. And overall, what, what our server size limits were, um, we want to make sure that we're just managing that stuff. Again, don't want any surprises. After we got done doing it, we put together a generation script um, that will create all the infrastructure behind the process. It'll create the database um, that collects this information on each server. It'll create the stored procedures, it'll create the tables, et cetera. So um, quite literally, you know, you, you take that generation script, um, you put it on a SQL server, you run it, and 20 minutes later, you have visibility into every column, every table, every database. Uh, we did it on one. We, we received a uh, kind of an orphaned SQL server and within 20 minutes, we had visibility into the 56,000 columns that were in it. So, you know, while we didn't become instant experts, it sure helped us get oriented around uh, the contents. It helped us get oriented around the sizing issues. Um, and it was, it's quite good. Very useful from that perspective. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we've implemented this on Microsoft SQL Server and we query the system tables. So we, we've got two different threads running. One will go out there. Uh, its purpose is to get the database sizing information. And the second one is to really look at the attributes to tables and columns and collect those. So each one of those two threads collects its own table. 
and one feeder job then combines the results at each server level. The combined results are then appended together and we get our reporting table. The data dictionary side, the data source is the consolidated table on one central SQL server. So the way that we have this rolled out now, there's one server that will collate all the resulting um, data from all the other servers. And, and that's the one that we just snap a Tableau on top of. It really keeps things simple from a Tableau perspective. We're able to just have one simple table, refresh as needed, works fine that way. Uh, we, we're using an extract. Um, even, even with a lot of data, you know, this is still not really big data. It's not anywhere near, it's not even lightweight, I'd say. Um, and and the, the, the actual table itself is really pretty skinny. So, you know, we get really, really good performance out of this. And we've published this up to the Tableau server so that anyone that's interested in the infrastructure of, of the data that we have on our servers um, can go and, and take a look at it. So there's really four components to this. There's a dictionary column list. That's what this whole project started out to be. It's just a listing of all the columns um, in every table on every database and every server. Then we have that duplicates column that I use in order to figure out, you know, kind of give me a clue as to which databases I should be taking a look at from a DBA perspective. And then we're using a bubble chart for the database size and a cross tab for the server size. So let's take a look at the dictionary, the data dictionary column list. Um, what I'd like to do is flip over to the actual, um, to the actual cross tab here. So what this does here is it'll show us the server name what database it is, the table name, and then all the different columns in it, and what they're, they're specced as. So this is really pretty easy for us to take a look at what kind of columns are in each table. And you can scroll through, it's in alphabetical order, and you can very easily see some uh, data typing faux pas. They, they really pop out um, when you're taking a look at this view. This, the next is the duplicate column names. This is the bar chart that I use to really point me in the direction of which databases uh, take a little uh, could use a little scrutiny. So the way that this is, I put the number of records sorted uh, to the size here. So what happens here is on each of, like take these first two databases, everything there is only occurs once. Every column name only occurs once in the entire database. No worries there. Uh, Flagler, I'm quite familiar with that database and I expected to see duplicates in that incidence. This database here, the one that we're calling Largo, definitely needs to be studied, as well as Tahoe here. This database down here, Emirates, I know exactly what that database is, and that's totally um, acceptable. So this is really, really useful at the server level um, down to the database level for me to really see, you know, what databases are people just dumping data into, you know, without really going through any normalization process. The, uh, the database size, this is one of the people's favorite because, you know, bubble charts are so darn intuitive. You know, people take a look at it and they immediately see and they immediately get it um, what's, what's going on. So 
what this does here is it, it gives us the, this is the used. The size on the size is used. Um, you know, you're, you're used by count. The color is the complexity of the data. If there's a lot of different column names, it's going to be darker. If there's not a lot of column names, it's going to be lighter. So what that does for me is it gives me at one quick glance is which, which one of these databases is going to have more complex data? Which one of these is really being used, um, you know, for a wide variety of data? And that's something that's important as the DBA. It's important for me to know that. Um, some of these lighter colored ones, you know, nothing ever really goes wrong with them. Typically, they are repetitive data that comes in, gets refreshed uh, once a month, twice a month, and just keeps growing. The, the actual contents don't really change. There's no real delta there. So that's really useful from that point of view. And then the final one, the final view that we have on our dashboard is the server names. And this is really, really useful because it lets me know how much free space I've got left. Um, you know, what do I really need to be on top of and keeping track of? And entirely as a department, at least within this subset of servers, I know that generally speaking, we're in pretty good shape. There is one server here that's really tiny. However, there's not much on it. So I'm not too worried about that. So finally, um, I want to comment on the generation script. It's really pretty uh, straightforward stuff. What it does is it goes out there, creates a database, and then it goes through and creates tables. It'll create the stored procedures, and it'll create um, any other object that's needed within, within the actual database that runs this data dictionary. That is, uh, that's the breadth and the scope of, of this presentation here. And I want to thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, feel free to contact me with any comments, questions, or suggestions. We had really uh, a great suggestion from Bill Humphreys, who uh, runs the Professional Services Division. He looked at this for like three seconds, well, maybe five seconds, and said, you know, you could do a quick filter on column name, and then by clicking any particular column, you'll immediately see what databases have that column. And, uh, and it just really speaks to, you know, what a great mind he's got. He instantly got the whole thing and added value there. So that's really all I want to have to say about this today. Thanks very much for your time.